Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. How are you? Pretty good. What yeah. you drinking on over there tonight? Uh, I finished off the bottle of Russell's Reserve that you ah. poured from. Wow. Because you left me. I've, I've already just forgotten. A, just a little bit. <laughs> That's right. Just just a little bit. Um, well, I think it's incumbent upon us as commentators generally uh, yeah. to talk about the Super Bowl. Oh, is it really? I, I think. I that's the impression that I got. Everybody else was talking about the Super Bowl. Did well, you watch the Super Bowl? I didn't watch the Super Bowl. I yeah, worked that whole day. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it was a good game. Like I would have liked to have watched it. But I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I guess all the scoring for at least one team was in the fourth quarter. Well, I mean, I was pulling for the Chiefs. I would I wanted the Chiefs to win, but only because the um head coach of the Chiefs reminds me of my uncle Melvin and like that was that was why I was pulling for him. Like that was that's all the skin I had in the game. <laughs> I guess that's as good a reason as any. Uh, I think so. How about so. tired of the 49ers? Or it's been half a century since the Chiefs won anything. Yeah. Uh, guy looks like a guy I know. Yeah. <laughs> looks like my uncle. What can I say? Okay. Well, that's not a lot of commentary on the game. Yeah. I, I I'm a little surprised though, I have to say. The Chiefs always choke. Yeah, and I just assumed that they would again. Not, not they this didn't. time. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Well, how about Super Bowl commercials? I haven't seen a Super Bowl commercial at all. Yeah. <laughs> not even like like I said I was going to go back and check some of them out, but I haven't done it. Yeah, I didn't. They're not going to catch me that way. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, it's a trick. Yeah. Um, you know. Okay, so when I was uh, living in Atlanta, uh, many many years ago, you know, roommates and so forth. Like, if you were the person in control of the remote and commercials came on, you got yelled at if you didn't immediately hit mute. Oh, really? So, so you mute for commercials. <laughs> mute for commercials. <laughs> and, so, well, now I just watch things where I don't have to deal with commercials. Like, I can't well, remember the last time I... I don't see a lot of commercials. A yeah. lot of the... I mean, I, I do... I'd watch some normal TV periodically, mm-hmm. but not regularly. When and I it's still, usually the news, and they're usually, like, pharmaceutical commercials. Of course. <laughs> uh, and don't forget... Um, Lockheed Martin and Lockheed Martin. Oh yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> yeah, all those news watchers are buying from Lockheed Martin. Um, yeah, I when I had cable still because I don't anymore. When I had cable still, and I was still watching football, so I didn't even watch my own team this year. So there was no way I was watching <laughs> the Super Bowl. But uh, yeah. when I was still watching football, I would always DVR the games. Yeah, because. Because American football, there's a whole lot of dead space. A lot of dead space. Like, I could watch an entire game without missing a single play um, in about 20 minutes. Really? Yeah, 20 to 30 minutes. That's pretty impressive. It's two and a half hours, three hours on TV. Yeah. 20 to 30 minutes, you can watch the entire game without missing a single play. Because you got, like, six seconds of play, and then, like... 30 seconds of commentary before they run the next play. So my favorite button on the little DVR remote was the advanced 30. I would just, as soon as the, as soon as somebody got tackled, (laughs) as soon as the ball was dead, advanced 30. (laughs) And then I I would usually see, (laughs) I would usually see them at the line and then they would hike it. And then the guy would get tackled and I'd hit advanced 30 and suddenly they're at the line again and they would hike it. That's the way you watch a football game. That sounds like fun, man. I'm gonna have to give that a try sometime. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah. So they're not they're not tricking me into watching commercials by making it like hyping it up. Why in the world would I go out of my way to watch to commercials? watch commercials? <clears throat> so uh, no, I didn't watch any either. Um, how about the halftime show? I've seen some snippets from it, but I didn't watch it either. Okay. Well, so. I did go back and watch the halftime show. Yeah. Um, I mean it it looked entertaining. Hey. Personally, for me, I'm a big fan of Shakira. Have been since I was in high school. Yeah, Hips well, don't lie, man. <laughs> for yeah, for a certain uh, segment of the population, probably um, you you get a echo in your mind, unbidden Shakira, Shakira, <laughs> and uh, exactly. so you can't help it. Um, Ooh, yeah, yeah, I'm not I'm not a big fan of uh, Jennifer Lopez. Me either, I, and I never have been, but I'm all about some Shakira, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know that song. Um, I didn't know that it existed until i went to south america oh Actually, really not even till i went to south america till i came back from south america oh yeah um and uh my brother made a 
I'm going to show my age because I was about to say mixtape. Um, <laughs> it's not a tape. It's a CD. It but, was a CD by then, right? <laughs> yeah. But uh, my brother made a, uh, a mix um, that like with a whole bunch of songs that evoked this or that from the trip. Yeah. Um, places, people, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, Hips Don't Lie was one of the songs on it. Nice. I was like, what the hell is this? I'd never heard it before. <laughs> and um, and what he should have done is given me the video because I would The video <laughs> don't lie, man. I'm telling yeah. you. Um, yeah. Well, uh, so the halftime show is okay. I I mean, it's certainly a big production. Oh, um, yeah. And they're, they're definitely talented people. I'm not entirely sure why in the middle of the Super Bowl... Uh, you had Jennifer Lopez hanging from a stripper pole. Um, <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of uproar over that. People were not happy with that. <laughs> yeah. Apparently I, kids watching and whatnot. And hey, I got two kids. I get it. My kids aren't that sheltered, though. <laughs> yeah. <well. laughs> as Mike has a grin on his face because he knows. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, uh, well, there's an understanding there, though. Yeah. Um, and uh, no, I get it. I Absolutely. I do find it. Yeah, I find it strange that 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 they would do that. And yeah. I, so I, is it empowering? Is it I, like, are, are strippers empowered or victims? Like I'm really getting mixed messages on strippers from, <laughs> right, from, from the media. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure which it is. So I did find it strange that they did that. It was a, it was a certainly a hypersexualized oh, without show question. for the yeah. middle of the, like the biggest family sporting event in America. Oh, I'd agree. Hmm. But Oh, well. Like I say, my kids aren't that sheltered, so it doesn't really personally matter to me, but I get why people were upset about it, though. Yeah. I mean, I do. Yeah. I, it didn't really matter to me either. I, I, it's fine. Yeah. Enjoyed it, right? Yeah, it was fine. <laughs> I mean, I, I watched it once. It's not like I watched it. Oh, and by the way, since I watched it, though, like my YouTube feed is suddenly full of... <laughs> Of like Shakira and Jennifer Lopez videos, which I'm not real thrilled about. I should have logged out before I before, <laughs> before I watched you watched the it. Yeah. Show. Oh, well. oh, you're gonna get that for a while now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm gonna have to keep delete. No, please stop showing me this. Right. Because um, I guess those videos get a lot more views than the stuff I usually watch. <laughs> right. They're like, oh, he's on to something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's getting away from this like obscure politics stuff and. Yeah. Watching something that other people are interested in too. <laughs> well, let's force it down his throat. <laughs> exactly. Got to shift me away from that alt right or whatever they think I'm into. Yeah. Right. You know? Um. Okay. Well, I. Moving on from there. So this is we're we're actually going to go into politics. Woohoo. Um. We tend to avoid talking about these personalities, these people, because it's irrelevant. I think in the long run. Yeah. Um. And people get bogged down in whether they like somebody or don't like somebody, and you know. The truth is, they all suck. So. Yeah, <laughs> they're all terrible. <laughs> right. If you're in politics, you're terrible. Yeah. Um, that's almost universally true. Pretty close. There's some people I like, you know, but that I don't think are terrible. <laughs> yeah. There's like there that's... are a few you know Thomas Masseys and oh, and yeah. people like that, but yeah. Ron Paul. Sure. <laughs> Mike says He's sure. not in politics anymore. He's not. Um, but yeah, all in all, seemed like a good guy. Yeah. I haven't met him personally, so yeah. I can't say for sure. But people I know who have think Every, very highly everybody of Everybody seems to vouch for him, so yeah. there's something there. But uh, most people I know that met Gary Johnson thought that he was a really great guy, too. Yeah, and actually, we know a few, quite a few people who met him and mm -hmm. said that, so... yeah. And I'm, not sure, impressed with I'm him. sure he is a great guy, like personally, but I just think he's not very good at politics. He's he's not a good he's not a good speaker. He's not he's not he doesn't make me excited when I hear him speak. No. He's boring. <laughs> yeah, and he's I don't think that he his ideas are very well developed. Yeah. Well he's not a principled libertarian. He's mm -hmm. a little bit of this and a little bit of that and you yeah, <laughs> and that's real not, kind of milk toast centrist. Yeah, which is fine politician. if you're into that kind of thing. But I mean, I want I want somebody more principled that's at <laughs> least at least thought the stuff through further than what he clearly has. Yeah, well, and I agree. And I didn't say that at the time, but I yeah I learned a lesson. <laughs> hey, eps, hey, as long as we're moving forward, I'm man. willing to admit my mistakes. We'll talk about this more at some point. I'm sure. I mean, we. We've got conventions and stuff coming up, and we're, we're not going to be able to get through them without talking about them. Oh, yeah. Um, but uh, somebody else had a 
had a had an event on Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday. Monday? That was Tuesday. Tuesday. Yep, the Iowa caucuses. Yeah. So what a disaster, right? Man, dude, this has been <laughs> it's so entertaining, man. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. Like I just I find this stuff hilarious. The Democrats just can't get it together right now. Okay. And I and like I say, you can believe what you want, but I think that they're out to screw Bernie right now. That's what's going on. Well, you want to give us a background around what happened? Um, so basically what happened is they had the Iowa caucuses and um I guess my understanding is is this app failed that they were supposed to be using to pull and tally all the votes. At least that's what they're saying. And so they weren't able to release the results till a day later. And even when they did, they only released like 62%, um, which put Pete Buttigieg like barely ahead of Bernie. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, conspiracy theory me thinks that that's probably, it was probably intentional that that, That's the reason they held these back. And at some point, they're going to come back and be like, well, it turns out Bernie actually won that state. But it doesn't really matter by them because the momentum's lost. Because that's really what Iowa represents. Mm -hmm. Iowa represents momentum. Mm -hmm. You don't get a whole lot of delegates out of it or anything. It's the momentum. The first state, you know, making a statement, you know. Yeah. And I heard that uh, um, Buttigieg had like a seven-point jump in New Hampshire, um, after the announcement that he had won the Iowa caucus. It makes which, a difference. Uh, it, it speaks to the um, the horse race mentality that Americans have about voting, that they're not trying to choose a, a winner, they're trying to pick a winner. <laughs> um, so it looked like he won, so suddenly he gets this big jump afterwards, which is... Uh, yeah, which why, I can't. why do you want to vote for the same person that everybody else is voting for? Like, I mean, I, I, I mean, it just doesn't make sense to me. Vote for who you think is the best person, not who everybody else is going to vote for. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's a weird concept, but you're right. Mm. I mean, that's but that's what Iowa represents. Mm. Is it kind of it's the first because I and I may not have said this on the podcast, but I say it a lot. None of this matters until votes start getting counted, um, and that, so Iowa was the first place the votes start getting counted. And people start. Mm being represented at least in the weird way that they do it <laughs> yeah i uh okay so you're familiar with uh animal farm um by yeah, george oh, yeah. orwell Absolutely. Uh, where he says uh um everybody's equal but some are more equal than others yeah um i i saw somebody comment uh make a comment on a, a blog uh today that um was using that as inspiration to say uh um all votes count, but some are counted more than others. <laughs> right. <laughs> Especially in the Democrat Party. <laughs> I thought that, that was really funny. Yeah. Um, well, it, that uh, that horse race mentality that people have is what we fight against as libertarians all the time. Yeah. Um, because the most common thing that people say to us is that, well, voting for a third party is a wasted vote. You're throwing your vote away. Yeah, Man, I hear that so away. often. And... Uh, Okay, I'm going to avoid making another Simpsons reference here, um, <laughs> but it's a good one. Oh, oh well. Anyway, um, now and that's what you, you got to explain to people. You say over and over again, like voting for somebody that you don't believe in is a wasted vote. Oh, absolutely. Uh, like that's that's wasting your vote. Picking somebody because other people have is a, is a waste of well, a vote. Well, and that's kind of how we've ended up in this two party system <laughs> situation we're in is because everybody is you're basically voting everybody's voting to get the other guy out or the other guy in mm-hmm. and nobody's willing to go out on a limb and vote for somebody that's different. Yeah. Uh, that's part of it. Because it's fear. It's all mm-hmm. and, and when you watch the media it's all fear. It's all well, we can't let Hillary be in there. Yeah. And, and and maybe you're right about that. Yeah. But you vote for Donald Trump instead. Like yeah. I mean seriously. Exactly. But the, they're saying to the Hillary supporters, well you can't can't let Donald Trump get in there. Um or the well, they're taking advantage of the the uh I don't know, the disdain, the hatred, the the fear of the other guy. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. So that's how they can get away with putting terrible candidates up year after year after year, or uh, you know, cycle after cycle. Yeah. That you'll end up with two horrible, horrible candidates like Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton because they know that you're going to vote for one of them because you're so afraid of the other one exactly. that you won't put your vote somewhere else where it might be actually useful, where you might make some changes. Yeah. Um, they, they get you so afraid of that guy that, well, if you vote for that third party, then that's really just like voting for the guy that you don't want to win. Yep. And, um, it, which is a terrible argument. Agreed. But that's, yeah. that's kind of the state of things as they are, you know? Yeah. I mean, if it's going to be terrible either way, do you really think that, 
Yeah. Like you're better off voting for this terrible over that terrible. Why don't you try and vote for something better? Yeah. Oh, know. absolutely. Um, but uh, yeah, that's my understanding. To get back to the Iowa caucuses. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah. My understanding is that the um, there wasn't a, that actually the uh, some of the changes that they made with this made the caucuses go more smoothly. Really? Um, that they you know they got to their totals quicker and and so forth. That um, but that the problem was with the reporting. Okay. Um, so the reporting is where the where the app really broke down, oh. and it wasn't transmitting uh, accurate information, or it wasn't transmitting information at all. And then they weren't prepared for everybody to have to use the call in line, so they didn't have enough people on the call in lines. And you know, yeah, that's, I did see that the call in the wait for the call ins was like hours and hours to yeah. get through because they had basically no one there. <laughs> yeah. Um, th- there was certainly a period of time. I understand where the average wait time was like between 90 and 120 minutes. Yeah. Um, sounds like a ride at Disney results. world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You are here this is 45 minutes from the front of the line. Um, and then at the end, it breaks down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it doesn't happen at Disney world. Oh, uh, you say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you better hope not. Well, at least the, uh, as long as it don't happen while you're on it, you're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess that's true. No, if you're like the next guy to get on it, I think that's worse than being the guy that's on it. I don't know, man. Stuck upside down on some ride. <laughs> yeah, but at least you got man. part of the ride. Like if you spent <laughs> two hours waiting in line just for them to say, oh, okay, <laughs> sorry, turn around. <laughs> right. It's <laughs> true. That sounds worse to me. Yeah. I'd rather get stuck halfway through. At least I got half a ride for my two hour wait. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you get to see the behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, right. Let's see how the maintenance crews work. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um so I well, what do you think of the results? I mean, I, I obviously they're saying that Buddha Judge won. They're saying that Sanders came in a close second. Well um then there's uh Warren Biden and uh Amy Klobuchar. I think it's hilarious that Biden ended up at fourth. It was fourth, right? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think that's just hilarious. Yeah. I I tell you, man, and I think I think his time his days are numbered. I don't mm-hmm. think he stays in this campaign much longer. I, I really don't. I think yeah. that he's I think he's due to drop out. It may be another month, but I don't look for him to go much further. I think you're gonna see him drop out and you know, we'll see where it goes from there. And I picked it early as far as Buddha Judge. I think Buddha Judge may end up walking away with this thing. I don't know. I mean, it's it's per, to me, it's either going to be him or Sanders. I mean, who else is it going to be? Yeah, um, Hillary. <laughs> it <laughs> could still be Hillary. Yes. <laughs> Maybe <Might be> Bloomberg. <laughs> Uh, it's not going to be Bloomberg. Nobody that what Bloomberg's play is what he's trying to do is he wants to he's focused his efforts on the late states and nobody's been able to pull the nomination pull on just the late states. But by, by the end, there's somebody will be established as a solid front runner by then, mm-hmm. and there's just no way he can make up the ground. Yeah. Uh, that's just my opinion, but I I just don't see it. Well, I I think the. Problem. All right, so we may as well talk about all these people um, individually and their policies and so forth, uh, or not. Um, yeah. And this is going to be a totally non-PC, I think. Certainly oh, yeah. from me, this is going to be totally non-PC. Well, like, I don't know how to be PC. So. We're going to cross some lines here tonight, so get ready. Yeah. Um, all right, Bloomberg... Like, all right, he's spending, spending, spending. Oh, he's putting and, um, some money down. And it's it's working, too. Uh, I mean, so? yeah, I mean, he's pushing up polls in uh, in all these places where he's spending tons of money. It, well, like putting a whole bunch of advertisements in front of people is enough, apparently. To well, he's earn he's about- putting down some advertisements because I'm seeing them. Like I see them on Facebook. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm like seriously, like this guy's on my Facebook. <laughs> you need to find a new browser then. <laughs> no that joke, that man. <laughs> um, but he's everywhere. I yeah. mean, that's my point. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's there's no way that they can win with him. Um, because the Democrat Party cannot put in front of the American people an old, white, New York, billionaire, effeminate Jew. <laughs> like, they they can't. I mean, it's just not going to work. Oh, I, oh, they can. They're oh, just yeah. not going to win. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that they have... Um, they have gotten their base so riled up against exactly that kind of person. It's true. Oh, that they can't possibly true. expect people to vote for him. I do think it would be entertaining, though, because if it does turn out to be Bloomberg, Trump will walk up to that podium with a big gulp 
every time he walks up there, it will be hilarious. Yeah, not to mention the problems that Swinburne <laughs> carries with him. The oh, way dude. he's tried to, like, the guy's so authoritarian. Yeah. Um, he has no absolutely joke. no uh, regard for personal liberty or privacy. Um, or actually, like, individual rights. He's he's yeah. terrible on a, all of those things. Everything. All of those um, things. And more. <laughs> and more. Uh, so, yeah, we can probably just throw this guy out. Um, yeah. Mayor Pete? Um, uh, okay, so you think Mayor Pete's going all the way. I think I, there's no way that the Democrat Party can put him in front of people either. Well, now, he's he's been a mayor of a reasonable city in a small state. Yeah. I no. mean, that that's what oh, he's done. I absolutely agree. I don't think you're wrong. And I... I would be surprised if he turns out to be the nominee, but I still pick him because he's the only one that looks like somebody that you could put in front of a group and be, and he's the only one that seems respectable to me. Okay. Here's the problem. And again, not PC. Yeah. He's gay. Oh, and that's a huge problem. He will not carry the black vote. Yeah. And and I don't see a Democrat being elected without carrying that. Yeah. I mean, um, it's just, they won't come they're out. They're too dependent on the black vote to to put this gay guy in front of them and, because they won't vote for him. No. And it's and it's not really even just that. Um, I, beyond the black vote that I think you're right, won't support him. Yeah. Um, won't support a gay man. Yeah. Um, I think that there's a whole lot of other people that won't either. I yeah. mean, it may not be a, a conscious, it may not even be a conscious decision, but I think that there's still a lot of people out there that will just associate. Um, I, I think that we'll have a lesbian before we have a gay man. Oh, and I, I agree I think with that. that. Uh, I think that the part of that is that people will subconsciously associate a gay man with weakness. Yeah, it's true. And I that's mean, not the guy that you want to put in front that's not to the, be your figurehead in foreign policy well, discussions. I that's mean, not the commander in chief. Yeah, yeah. I- exactly. And there's a whole, I mean, not even just because of this country, uh, but there are going to be leaders of a lot of countries that won't really deal with him or certainly won't take him seriously. Oh, no, there's, that's absolutely true. Um, I mean, at least in my mind. Mm-hmm. If, if you're going to have a gay pr- man president, it's going to have to be somebody that's more of a man than Pete Buttigieg is. I'm just going to say that. I mean, that guy is not... I mean, it's, if you could have it if it was like this big, macho gay man, but that ain't what Pete Buttigieg is. Yeah. <laughs> He's just not respectable enough. Um, but at the same time, he, he at least, he seems the most like he's presidential, like he... Yeah, he carries himself he well. He carries himself well. Uh, I um, agree. As a politi- as, as a traditional politician. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got problems in his policies, though, too. Uh, now, he is putting criminal justice reform up front. Uh, there's good and bad in that from him. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's he wants to abolish mandatory uh, minimums. Um, uh, he wants to hold police accountable. Uh, he wants to, um, he's not legalizing drugs, but, um, is trying to deal with them. Bring back, draw back some of the penalties. Yeah. Make them less severe. Um, and possession was going to be completely abolished as a crime and, and he's going to do it retroactively. So everybody who is in jail for possession or is suffering any penalty for possession, it would be immediately dropped and... Hey, so forth. That's all good things, I think. Yeah. Um, oh, I agree with that. The other thing, though, is that he like really feels like you can just put a whole bunch of money into the criminal justice system, and that'll fix and a lot of it. And that'll fix it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, he's like trying to uh, reduce pharmaceutical costs, but he thinks that it's going to be done with more government. <laughs> that if you just put more government into it, um, then you know, that'll fix it. Um, but he is trying to draw back on the patents, which I think is a good thing. Um, so so I'm sorry. I spent a terribly boring day, um, recently going to all these people's websites and looking through their (laughs) platforms. Going through their platforms. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. It's almost as bad as the impeachment (laughs) hearings. (laughs) It it might've been worse because, well, I don't know how angry I would have gotten listening to the impeachment hearings, but like reading some of this stuff, I was just like, "Oh my goodness!" Yeah. Um, for uh, the uh, Second Amendment stuff, he's pretty bad. Um, oh, I would imagine. You know, increase background checks, uh, red flag laws, etc. Um, but I think every single one of these people was on board with that red flag laws, so that's not 
that doesn't make him any worse than any of the rest of them. Yeah. Um, for immigration, he wanted to form two new federal offices to deal with this. Uh, really? <laughs> he wanted a separate immigration court, um, and he wanted a office of new Americans. <laughs> or oh, something really? To, like help people transition or something Man, like that's, that. That sounds creepy. <laughs> yeah, the office of new Americans. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> um, and he wants you know to protect them, ease access to public services here, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but he wasn't, he's not open borders. Yeah. All right. So I, I started that's to see That's a problem some, in his party. Yeah. Well, I mean, I saw some, some places where you could kind of draw some lines between these people. So, um, open between like the more centrist group and the more progressive group, yeah. uh, open borders versus not open borders, but easy immigration was one of those things. Okay. Um, and uh, then Green New Deal was another one of those things. So um, the progressives were on board with the Green New Deal, and the the more centrists weren't supporting the Green New Deal, but wanted a whole bunch of climate stuff. I mean, yeah. and sometimes there's like Amy Klobuchar, who essentially supports the Green New Deal, but didn't want to call it that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, you got to preach to that choir, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I, I, so then there's some, some of these weird things like uh, Buttigieg on the economy. He wants to lower costs uh, of consumer goods and raise incomes. <laughs> okay, man. I think we all want to do that. Like, what's right? your plan, right? <laughs> yeah. How are we going to um, do that? <laughs> I've got a plan for that, but yeah. I'm not telling him. <laughs> right. um, and then he, of course, wanted to protect and grow unions. Uh, unions, that was another thing that was kind of everybody Universal. said the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, of course, the like I said, with the environment, uh, more regulations and spending, like lots more, lots more spending. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Uh, he okay. So then there's the thing that's really important to me: the foreign policy stuff. Hardly addresses foreign policy. Really, like barely addresses foreign policy. And this is a guy who's in the military, right? <laughs> barely addresses foreign policy. Um, but he called for a new national service, um, expanding government paid service opportunities like the Peace Corps and AmeriCorps and uh, military service and uh, like all kinds of other programs like that. Um, and expanded by a lot, like really? like many times uh, <laughs> what it is now. A lot more money. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, I'm opposed to generally, but there are worse ways, I guess, to spend money than that. But yeah. not a lot. Um, he <laughs> So he didn't really have any foreign plan. And in fact, he uh, the New York Times um, sent questionnaires to a bunch of people, you know, a bunch of these candidates recently. And he just like didn't answer questions on Iran, Iraq, Yemen, Russia. Like he just refused to even answer None the questions. None of these places are going to talk to him anyway. He's gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're probably <laughs> right. Um, but he does have a real plan for combating extremism. Um, in his policy program, and it, it really addresses strongly white supremacy and the gun lobby. Oh, really? That's the that's the domestic extremism, domestic terrorism, white supremacists <laughs> and the gun lobby. Really? So that's that's Pete Buttigieg essentially. <laughs> Those are the high points. Yeah. Um, and wow. then okay, so he we'll, we'll assume that he finished first. Yeah. Uh, next was Bernie. Um, yep. So I, I figure we kind of do these in this kind of order, right? Yeah, kind of go um, from how they did in Iowa. See, I didn't even address Bloomberg, so it was just fine that we did him first. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, Bernie, uh, so uh, yeah, here was another one. Uh, so the the centrist um, didn't claim Medicare for all. In fact, Buddha Judge was Medicare for all who want it. Ooh. So you could continue to do your own private plan if you wanted. Yeah. Um, then the progressive side, including Bernie, is, of course, the Medicare for all crowd. Oh, yeah. So this yeah. is another one of those lines. Um, free college, uh, affordable housing, um, which he was going to do with national rent control. That'll be great. Really? You want to really drive up homelessness. I was going to fix the say that works so well in New York, right? That we want to bring that here. San Francisco, <laughs> San LA. San Francisco. Yeah. Like, I mean, I've never lived in any of these places, so I don't, I can't t speak from experience, but my understanding is, is that anywhere you have rent control, you have extremely out of control prices. Yeah. It disincentivizes people from improving, from expanding. Yeah. It's just a cost that's unnecessary. And and you think that you're saving people, but what you're actually doing 
is you're reducing the supply. Yeah. You're, you're artificially reducing supply. And of course the demand continues to rise because yeah. people keep getting, being people, born. People have to live somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is it's so, a basic need. Yeah. Um, poor plan. Uh, I think, um, scary plan. Yeah. He, he, so this came up several times. This was a kind of a weird idea. He was talking about, you know, taking on the banks. And, yep. uh, one of the things that one of his proposals that, um, that all post offices would offer, uh, basic banking services. Post offices? Yes. Post offices. What? All post offices would, would offer basic banking services. Um, he would cap, uh, interest on consumer loans at 15%, which just means the whole bunch of people won't get loans at all. Yeah. Um, well, let's see. There was something else related to that. Uh, let me see if I wrote it down. Um, no, not that I see. That's just, oh, well. that's the first I've heard of that. That seems kind of insane. Like it almost seems like those two shouldn't even like meet like the post, post office, office and banking, <laughs> and banking. Like I mean, my mom worked for the post office, so I won't say anything negative about the post yeah. office, but doesn't seem like they work as a bank well. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, you know what's interesting, though, is that I have um, uh, had transactions with businesses in the past that accepted postage in lieu of cash. Really? Yeah. I mean, I thought that was always a joke that you were, like, going to use your stamp collection as currency. But <laughs> I yeah. mean, that's something I've heard people do. Yeah. Do you take stamps? <laughs> And and some places have. I don't know if it really yeah. happens much now. This was a long time ago, but yeah. I mean, I I had some uh, transactions with some internet businesses yeah. that accepted postage in lieu of, of payment. another payment. Yeah, <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, and uh, it, you know they works. were probably sending it. a bunch of stuff out, and yeah, it and works. so it's it's and it's as good as money. Yeah, it's to them it is because they're gonna yeah. have to buy it anyway. Um. That's interesting. Of course, he, you know, he's on board with the wealth tax. Oh, I, I should have just stuck with all the free stuff, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, high speed internet for all, jobs for all. Uh, let's see. <laughs> jobs for everyone. Uh, you get yeah. a job. You get a job. <laughs> exactly. Um, I'm sure there were other free things. That I guess they weren't important enough for me to write down. Um, now, well, we'll come back to foreign policy on him. Um, and he is a supporter of the Green New Deal because he's on the progressive side. Uh, he wanted to end charter schools. Really? Yeah. I was like, well, that's like some of the best educations you can get in this country. Why in the world would you want to? <laughs> but whatever. Because he's a socialist. We yeah, can't have these. We can't have people educated. Yeah. You can't not well. <laughs> yeah. You, you're not supposed to compete with the government on education. That's against the rules. Yeah. Uh, he didn't want to legalize weed. So, hey, you know, um, he wanted to audit the Fed. I'm, All right. I'm down. And democratize it. I have yeah. no idea what that means. <laughs> well, if we can start by auditing it, I'm on board. Yeah. <laughs> if that can be step one. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, I think he, he said something along the lines of, uh, these policy things, by the way, were really long. Oh, I'm they, sure. Like they wrote so much, on, or somebody wrote for them yeah. so much on these Well, and things. most of it's just like fluff, right? Yeah, a lot of it was. Yeah. Um, I mean, there were, you know, some people's almost entire thing, like both Warren and Klobuchar, uh, half of the half of everything that they wrote was how terrible Trump is. Well, yeah. So, okay. <laughs> that doesn't set you apart. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but uh, I, I think what he, he was saying, you know, in terms of democratizing it, he's like, uh, you know, want the... Um, the Federal Reserve to work for everybody, not just the the rich. Well, okay. I mean, but you can't. Like, the only <laughs> way to make that happen is to get rid of it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, because as long as you're controlling the money supply, it's always going to work for the people that get the money first. Well, exactly. I mean, and that's... that's why the government likes it, and that's why the bankers like it, because they're the first two groups to get that money. And that's why Bef we before the inflation it. hits. Yeah, exactly. Right? We've like, talked about this on the podcast. Yeah. Um, so that yeah, the only way that you're democratizing the Fed or making it work for everybody is to just get rid of it entirely. To eliminate it. Yeah. Um, let's see uh, what else. Oh yeah, uh, of course his Second Amendment stuff is terrible. Um, <laughs> he's on board with red flag laws. Uh, he wants to end the gun show loophole. Have we talked about the gun show loophole? Uh, that this thing doesn't exist? We haven't, but we definitely need to. Okay, we're going to mention it right now because a, bu a bunch of them had the gun show loophole uh, in their platforms. So it, the gun show like loophole, yeah, yeah it, it doesn't exist. If you're buying from a, um, 
from an FFL, which is a, a federal firearms licensed dealer, at a gun show, they do a background check. They absolutely do. Um, and they record all your information. What they're talking about, the gun show loophole, is that individuals will trade and sell firearms um, with other individuals there. Yeah. And they don't have to be at a gun show to do that. And essentially what they're trying to stop is from people making decisions about their own property. Yeah. Like, if if I have a gun that I'm tired of, and it's my gun, yeah. then I should be able to sell it to Liberty Larry if he wants it, and he's willing to give me money for it. Yeah, or trade weapons, <clears throat> because there's a lot of that that goes on, too. You've yeah. got this gun, I've got this gun, you know, let's make a swap, mm-hmm. you know? I yeah. mean, if you're aware that somebody's a felon, you're still not supposed to sell them a gun. You can still yeah. get in trouble for that. So oh, absolutely. it's not... It, it, this gun well, show loophole doesn't really exist. In Alabama, actually, at one point, I think they've changed it since, but had mm-hmm. it right as far as I was concerned with this issue, is if somebody has a pistol permit... You could you could buy and sell guns with them all all the time. In fact, even when you went to the FFL or, or licensed FFL, you just gave them your pistol permit, and that's what you used to buy the gun. Because if you have a pistol permit, then you're you've had a background check ran on you. At have least, you? Because I swear, I least, walked in, I just gave them money and walked out with a pistol permit. Well, they they're supposed to run a background check yeah. on you. Um, they probably did afterwards. But, uh, well, that means you haven't had a felony in the last five years, basically. Last five years. Nope, you're right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, and to me, that's that's a that's a logical answer to this. You know, mm-hmm. if somebody's got a pistol permit, then yeah. they're probably good to sell to. A lot of states don't to. do that, though. Well, yeah. And honestly, I wish we didn't here in Alabama. I mean, I think that would be, I mean, obviously, I'm against permits. Yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah. I, I think that is I'm not at least... supposed to have to have a license to, to exercise one of my fundamental rights. And I absolutely mm-hmm. agree with that. But at the same time, it's at least a fair compromise there as far as that end of it goes. Um, and, of course, he wants to ban assault weapons. <laughs> what, Defined as means. black yeah. and mean, mean looking. looking. Yeah, yes, exactly. Um, <laughs> but he didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, his foreign policy platform is actually pretty good. Is it? Uh, I mean, this is a guy who voted against the Iraq War. Um, he, he's voted against a lot of these military interventions. He's yeah. he's been pretty good on this. Now that being said, um, his foreign policy advisor is this guy named Matt Duss, um, who I don't know a whole lot about. Uh, but I do know that he's the son of a of a guy named Serge Dust who worked for decades for CIA front NGOs. Oh, really? So there's like a weird foreign policy um, bug in his ear, I guess. <laughs> yeah. You know, that might kind not of, lead him in the direction that we would like. Yeah. I, I don't know kind how much stock he puts into these people, though. But yeah, Well, anyway. I mean, a lot of these guys, though, they pick people from all sides because they mm-hmm. want to... And I'm not saying that's what this is because I don't know. But, I mean, I know a, a lot of politicians hire people from all different angles so they can get each version of what they should do yeah. and make a decision with all the information, you know, hmm. with all arguments made. Okay. Um, now, do I'm you not think a lot of them do that? I think some of I know some of them do. I don't. Okay. I won't go as far as to say a lot of them do that. Yeah, that that may be generous, but but yeah. I know some of them do that. Well, I I mean I would do that, but um, but I'm I'm you, smart, <laughs> right? Yeah, you could put it together what the right answer is. <laughs> <laughs> um. So uh, anyway, that's that's Bernie, and I still I know like we've talked about this, uh, you and I have, um, off air, um. But I just, I don't think that they're going to let him get the nomination. Uh, the only way he can get the nomination in my mind is if he does what Trump did and he just wins so big that they can't take it away from him. And if they do take it away from him, that it would ruin the party because that's where the Republicans were. The Republicans wanted to take that nomination away from Trump, but they knew it would destroy the party if they did because he had won by such a large margin. Well, the Democrats have already dealt with this once and they still took it away from him. They did, but they, they were able to do it in a way that it didn't, well, at least they don't think that it would hurt the party. (laughs) Now I would argue that they hurt the party immensely doing it, but they don't think that they did. Um, and, and it just depends on how big he can win. If he can come through with a, a big enough victory, there's no stopping him. But I, I don't know that he can do that. I mean, yeah. I don't. 
Um, and the, like Iowa may just be the first wrinkle in this saga where they try to take this from him. Hmm. So it oh, just, well, it is. It's the first one. It's definitely the first one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, well, let's move on to uh, Elizabeth Warren. This is right. number th- number three in in the Iowa caucuses, presumably. Yeah. Um, so she's Green New Deal, and she's also added the Blue New Deal. Ooh, what's that? I like. Blue. It's the same thing, but for oceans. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. I thought that the oceans were incorporated into the Green New Deal, but I guess you needed <laughs> something separate. She she has a plan for everything, you know. And yeah. actually, if you go to her webpage, you might believe that that's true because it goes on and it's on just and on. Pages There's and pages. So many little little uh, policy cards. My plan for blah blah blah. Yeah. You know. Um, I didn't go through them all because <laughs> who has time, right? Yeah. <laughs> We'd um, still be doing it. In fact, I don't even have a whole lot to say about her. She's she's definitely on the progressive side. Yeah. Uh, get rid of guns, uh, Green New Deal, Medicare for all, et cetera. I mean, like all of those things. Wealth tax. Um, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Um, you know, it's uh, climate change and poor workers. Um, let's see. What else? Oh. Uh, okay. So, by the way. As long as I'm mentioning that, um, the poor workers. Yeah, uh, this is like part of her climate change plan. That's this why is, I put this these is under together. climate change. Yeah, yeah. poor workers um, is under climate change. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, what I don't understand this comes up a lot. Why is the focus always on workers without any regard to consumers? Yeah. Like not everybody is a worker. Everybody is a consumer. And in fact, if you help the consumers, you're helping all the workers. Yeah. I mean, they may be getting lower wages, but they're paying a whole lot less everywhere else. Well, so yeah. anyway, they, it's like they, they don't even, they, but there's never it's, any consideration whatsoever for consumers in any of these people's plans. And I no. just don't understand why they don't make any connections here. Like everybody has to buy stuff. And if we increase the costs of everything, this that's hurting is everybody. That's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and of course she wants to cancel student debt and offer free college. Um, she doesn't really talk about foreign policy either. She, uh, although she's not, she's not terrible. She's definitely on the bring the troops home kind of thing. Um, she wants to be, so this, she's got this really schizophrenic approach to, uh, to the foreign policy thing. She wants to be vigilant about terrorism, but bring the troops home and ensure that the veterans get really great benefits. Yeah. Cause that's a really important part. They all talked about how the veterans need really great benefits. Yeah. And I don't disagree that we should take care of our veterans, oh, but I think the best either. way to take care of our veterans was the part right before that is to bring them home. <laughs> yeah. Well that, and to get them out of the VA, let them use the private insurance. Well, she's not on board for that. No, I bet she's not. Medicare but for all. Well, yeah, but I'm just just saying. like the VA, <laughs> right? Yeah, we'll all be in the VA now. So. Um, she uh, had this big thing about uh, ending corruption in in the in DC in Washington, um, and of course, like the write up on this was all about how how terrible Trump is. Um, but like she, uh, so she gives this stat um, on trust in government, and in 1958, 73 percent of Americans trusted that their government was doing or trying to do the right thing. Um, in 2019, it's only 17%. And uh, so with my own thesis that government expansion leads to corruption, yeah. I looked up another statistic based off of hers. All right. All right. So here's, here's my statistic for Elizabeth Warren um, that goes along with her trust in government statistic. Um, in adjusted... Uh, U.S. dollars, um, the federal spending um, in 1958 was $82.5 billion. In 2019, it's $4.7 trillion. <laughs> it is 57 times, the government is 57 times bigger now than it was in 1958. Do you think maybe that could be partly responsible for why people trusted the government back then when they weren't doing very much as compared to right now? It's definitely a factor. I mean, it has to be. Like, I mean, how could it not? <laughs> yeah. Um, so Biden, uh, number four on our list. All right. Um, unless you have something you want to say about Elizabeth Warren. No, I, I got on. nothing on her, man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Biden, he had a very different setup. Like his, he didn't really give 
specific policy plans or anything. Like his whole website was very vague. Uh, he's um, a true politician. He's the veteran in the group. Yeah, here. exactly. He's the done best this thing before. To do is to not say anything at all. <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly. And he knows this. Oh yeah. He um, does. Especially but, for him, by the way. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Like, that guy just needs to keep his mouth shut. Right. And maybe he does better in writing yeah, maybe, when somebody else is writing it for him. When someone writes it for him, yeah. Um, but he did have this uh, a quote on this on his site. He said, uh, well, I, I mean, I took this from his site. It's not, it's not a quote that he had. It's a quote from his, like, something that I pulled from his site. Okay. Okay. Um, he said, uh, this country wasn't built by Wall Street bankers and CEOs and hedge fund managers. It was built by the American middle class. I disagree. All right. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, the History Channel did a whole series. The Men Who, the built, men America. who built America. I've heard of the series. You're right. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. Yeah. Um, the Men Who Built America. They yeah. weren't a whole bunch of middle class people. <laughs> you don't think so? Yeah. It was... Vanderbilt, J.P. Morgan, uh, Andrew Carnegie, and uh, Rockefeller. Yeah. Right. Um, you got uh, like J.B. J.P. Morgan is exactly a banker. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of these guys were CEOs. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Carnegie with U.S. Steel, Rockefeller with Standard Oil. These guys, um, they're, and they were by far the wealthiest people in the world. Uh, at this time for their time, yeah. um, like richer than Kings. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, you look at that and you think, Oh, how terrible it was. But it was, you know, the whole rising tide thing. Yeah. Um, like they oversaw the largest expansion of wealth in the history of the world with a huge, huge increase in living standards for, for everybody, for yeah. everybody, yeah. not just, not even just everybody here, yeah. but for everybody in, in the developed world. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, uh, steel, uh, under Carnegie with his, uh, innovations and so forth, the cost of steel went to like four cents on the dollar. Um, you know, uh, uh, Rockefeller with standard oil, um, oversaw the shift from, uh, the, like the oil based gasoline, um, you know, he was, and he was just, he was using a byproduct to create another new, like huge expansion in, in energy supply. Yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, kerosene that he was making before made light available to everybody, like everybody in their home <laughs> for a reasonable price before then it was like whale oil and stuff, which was far more expensive. And, um, so it gave people the opportunity to, you know, after dark read, yeah, right. <laughs> I, I mean, I think not, that, the day's not over yet. Right. Yeah. Uh, this is important. I mean, this yeah. is something that it allowed people to expand um, their knowledge and their skills after dark. Yeah. Uh, so, like, these people were, were in fact, CEOs and bankers, and uh, their innovations and their drive and th their drive to profit. Yeah. They were also philanthropists, all of them. Yeah. Um, but their drive to profit uh, Im improved everybody's lot. Yeah. Like everybody in the world, we're still reaping the benefits from that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, so yeah, I just, I just disagree. It's not <laughs> the, it, it goes along with AOC's whole thing about, um, you know, somebody that developed the widget, uh, they didn't build that. The, the, they hired thousands of workers at slave wages and those people <laughs> built the widget. Well, there would be no widget to build if it weren't for that first guy. Exactly. Like, nobody yeah. got a job from a poor man. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's true. That's not actually, well, I mean, that's not actually true either because uh, yeah. I, you've known uh, small business owners. Oh, They're yeah. They're generally oh, very God. poor people. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> but it, that, they didn't start that way. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> They're just it's the true. last people to get paid on whatever it was that they developed. Exactly. So, yeah, like I say, so that's that's pretty well Biden, I guess. Anything else from him? Yeah, red flag laws. Uh, he doesn't want Medicare for all, but he wants to expand the uh, Affordable Care Act. Okay. Obamacare. Yeah. Um, he actually was on with the Green New Deal, and this is something weird from a centrist. And uh, and he wants uh, tuition free community college. Uh, and that's also the same as our next one, which is Amy Klobuchar. Yeah. Who's which, also <laughs> kind of a mix. By the way, like she's just such an aside to me. Like. Okay, sorry about that, everyone. We had a bit of a power problem. 
<laughs> but yeah, the power outage. <laughs> but I jumped online, paid the bill. Everything's <laughs> fine now. So hopefully we can make it through the end. <laughs> we'll see. <clears throat> so are we recording? Yeah, we're recording. Okay. We're good. So yeah, Klobuchar. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm not sure exactly where that cut out, but uh, she's also um, on board with the uh, free community college. Yeah. Not free college total, just free two-year college and yeah. like associate's degrees and things like that, like little one-year and two-year um, stuff. She doesn't say, like I said earlier, she doesn't say Green New Deal, but That's it's what... essentially the Green New Deal. And she wants to, on the first day, re-enter the Paris Climate Agreement um, and invest a trillion dollars in green infrastructure. All right trillion dollars uh she's also on board with red flag laws uh ban um high capacity magazines but she doesn't say she wants to ban assault rifles oh well she's just going after the big mags then yeah what gets an assault rifle without a big mag (laughs) i know right (laughs) um and but she also wants to close the gun show loophole oh yeah um let's see Oh, (laughs) this one, I hadn't heard about this. Uh, So she wants to require employers to set aside 50 cents an hour for all of their employees into portable personal savings accounts. Really? Yes. (laughs) Kind of like a... That they can use in case of emergencies and things like that. Kind of like a 401k? Yeah, sort of. (laughs) Sort of like that. Sort of like that. Except that you don't have a choice. Yeah, right. (laughs) Right. And neither does your employer. Which yeah. is now like more bureaucracy for them, more things that they well, have to do. Well, this is just something else for the government to get tangled up in and a way to, yeah. to shut small businesses down because that's the type of thing that hurts small businesses. Yeah. Well, and this is one of the big problems with the, um, with the healthcare system in this country now is that the government made it employers' responsibility to provide healthcare. And that ruined the system in so many ways um, because it made you beholden to your job first off because you know yeah. now if you leave your job you may have to start over with your health care and yeah. you know but that wasn't necessary I mean employers were offering health care as perks to try and draw employees you know back in the day of a more of a free market where you know and lower wages in general where people could negotiate their own plans and then employers would uh, you know, compete for the best employees yeah and they would offer these kind of perks and then the government made it a requirement yeah. that everybody provide these perks and uh, yeah. y- anyway just well, mucks, this is a discussion mucks, for another podcast mucks the whole system up yeah um she also talked about the a new national service expansion like what i was talking about with uh pete buddha judge oh, yeah. um I- i'm still not exactly sure what they're what they're after on this. I think it's, uh, it's their version of Bernie's uh, job for all kind of thing. Um, <laughs> just to expand uh, government offered jobs. We're going to dig a bunch of holes and then we're going to fill them back in. Put a nerd <laughs> in it. Um, yeah. Right. Uh, let's see. Mm. Oh yeah. She's a uh, free internet. Um, she doesn't talk about foreign policy, but she'll also combat those white supremacists. Oh, yeah. um, those domestic terrorists. Got to watch out for those guys. Yeah. Um, so not a lot to say. She's kind of boring. Uh, Dude, like I said at the, at the offset to her, like I just I don't even know why she's there. Like I, I don't get it. Yeah. I mean I I, I haven't, and I like surprised she's still there. Mm. <laughs> so. Well, I think she had a bit of a bump with this actually, um, with the Iowa. With caucus. Iowa, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean she she got a percentage, so I mean that's something. <laughs> All right. Um, we've been going for a while, so let's try and close this out real quickly with just a couple more. All right. Uh, Andrew Yang. Um, he's Yang gang. Yeah. He's only got a few things. Um, and this guy's really sharp. I actually, actually I mean, I, so I've heard some interviews with him and I agree. Like, I mean, I don't agree with what he's espousing, mm-hmm. but he's, he's, he's thought it through well and he's a sharp guy. Yeah. I mean, I, I respect him as far as he's that's a salesperson. He defends his position quite well. He does. Um, but of course his big thing is the bribe. Yeah. The, if you yeah. vote for me, I'll give you $12,000 a year. Wait, a month? No, Is it's it a $1,000 a month, $12,000 okay, a year. Okay, $12,000 a year. My yeah. bad, yeah. <laughs> um, universal basic income is a terrible idea. Well, I mean, actually, I wouldn't even be opposed if it was in lieu of all the other programs. Honestly. But that's not the way it's going to work. And honestly, I've, I've said this before, and I wouldn't be for this per se, but I would much rather shut down all 
EBT and all of that and just go to UBI. I mean, why yeah. not? I mean, it would be, to me, that would be a better system than what we have. Now, I'm not saying it would be a good system because <laughs> yeah. it wouldn't be, but to be better than what we have. Well, he, he's got three things. It's the UBI, uh, Medicare for all, and um, human-centric capitalism. <laughs> do, we Which know, I didn't, do we know what that means? Because I don't. Not entirely. Um, but at least he mostly believes in capitalism. <laughs> mostly. <laughs> the guy that wants to give away $1,000 a month yeah. believes in capitalism. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he, just, know. I he mean. just wants capitalism with a conscience. Okay. <laughs> or something. Uh, I, I didn't, I, I mean, like I read through the stuff and I, I didn't quite get it. Yeah. And I didn't have time to like really pursue it. So, <laughs> well, and he hasn't been a big factor in this anyway. So. No, I mean, he's a couple of percentage points, right? And yeah. So, um, now he did have a little bit of foreign policy stuff though. Um, the, the bad things where he wants to strengthen Na- bad things from my perspective. Yeah. Right. Or that he wants to strengthen NATO and increase state department funding. Now he thinks that the state department is uh, diplomacy. <laughs> he apparently didn't read anything about uh, one Hillary Clinton. Right. <laughs> no. um, but he did want to uh, audit the, this is the upside. Okay. Um, he wants to audit the Department of Defense. He wants to repeal the AUMF that we've been functioning other, under since 2001, 2002. Hey, um, all for that. Yeah. Um, and he wants to make it harder for the U.S. to go to war without a clear plan and goal. Yeah. Okay. I think that that should be hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think if you follow the Constitution, it would it is be hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be. Um, and then finally, even though she's not getting any attention anymore, oh. uh, I, I did want to just mention Tulsi. Absolutely, um, she's the only person that puts the most important issue first. Uh, and foreign she, policy, and she's good on it. Pretty good on it. I mean, she oh, still she's wants to. Good. Yeah, I mean, she wants to. She still wants to pursue the terror war. She's just not. Um, on board with regime change wars. Yeah. Uh, she wants like limited, uh, you know, limited engagement against Al Qaeda well, and ISIS. And I think if you're being real, those kinds of groups, I think though, if you're being real, or Al Sham and like whatever. Yeah. But I think if you're real about what you want it, as far as doing this, mm-hmm. I think you have to do it that way. Cause I mean, I wouldn't necessarily be on board with just like pulling all of our troops home, like mm-hmm. in a day. Yeah. I mean, I, and I, and I'm all for bringing them home. Like, don't take me wrong. I just, I don't think you can, I think you have to have a plan where you walk us back. No. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't think that it's a step down. I think that she really wants to pursue terrorists wherever they are. Yeah. Well, uh, but I mean, maybe I, that I wouldn't so much agree with, but mm-hmm. I mean, I do think I would, I wouldn't be for doing it all overnight. I yeah. mean, of course her economics are terrible. She's $15 minimum wage and like benefits for everybody and so like, on. She wants to take that, uh, that foreign policy money, that war money, um, and bring it back here and spend it on other things yeah. but at least she wouldn't be blowing up your medicare money she would be spending <laughs> exactly. your medicare money here which is actually bernie's kind of bernie's thing too right yeah. like that's why his foreign policy is medicaid pretty good money. yeah <laughs> yeah he doesn't want to blow up your medicaid money he wants your medicaid money to stay right here going to medicaid Absolutely. of course he wants to take more of your money to go to medicaid yeah, also because but... that's not enough just what we're blowing up right <laughs> we need more right um i did read an article that just did a rundown of uh pretty much all the candidates that had been in the race at some point or another that got any attention whatsoever. It was like 20 something people. Dude, it was a um, massive field, including people that had dropped out in August. And I, there was this weird part where they said that, uh, um, Eric Swalwell, uh, Pete Buttigieg and, uh, Tulsi Gabbard were all 38 years old. Now it, this, they had separate bios. So okay. in each of their little independent bios, it said that each of them was 38 years old, but then it said in, in Pete Buttigieg's bio that he was the only millennial in the group. <laughs> I think we got a math problem there. Yeah. <laughs> Need to call Yang. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure how they're all the same age, but they're in different, they're in different generations, but, um, <laughs> I just chalk it up to they're ignoring Tulsi. Right. And Swalwell actually is out of the race. Yeah. Um, but they're pretending that Tulsi is too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm definitely still getting emails from her, so she's not done yet. Oh, no. I, like I say, I follow her on Facebook, and I'm getting notifications yeah. a couple of times a day from her. So. Um, one more thing on her. I did get a uh, note a couple of days ago. They were asking for because that's what they're always doing when they send notes. Like, hey, please give me more money. Yeah. Um, Chip in. Yeah, yeah, chip in. Um, but they were trying to uh, put money together for a spot 
and that they were going to run in New Hampshire all over the place. And I just think she went about it all wrong. Um, it was about how uh, people used to respect the office of president and they don't anymore because of Trump. Okay, um, well, okay. that doesn't separate you. Like that doesn't yeah. you're you're not competing against Trump right now. You're competing against a bunch of other Democrats, and they all say that. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I think the what separates her is the foreign policy thing. And what she should have done is she should have gotten up there and said, "Wouldn't it be nice to have somebody sitting in the Oval Office that knew who's on whose side, yeah. had experienced the battlefield, that understood what was going on in our foreign policy?" Oh, I absolutely. mean, not like that exactly, but that's the way so- she should have approached. Something along it. those lines, though, that would be the pitch. Yeah, that's her marketing point. Yeah, but she didn't do that. So, a shame. But that's all of them, essentially. Um, yeah. Steyer, I guess we could... Uh, I know nothing about him yeah. other than he's a bajillionaire. Yeah, he's like really rich. That's it. <laughs> that's his thing. <laughs> yeah. He's white and rich. So yeah. that disqualifies him, I think. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, that, that pretty well wraps it up. I do want to say real quickly about the caucus system. I was fixing to prompt you. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know if you had forgotten. No, no. Um, I, I actually like the caucus system yeah. uh, because it it makes sure that people are actually involved. I mean, like going in there and voting doesn't require any kind of knowledge at all. Like, and at least the caucus system, they actually get up there. They talk about why they're voting for these people. They, they're trying to convince each other. Um, it, well, there's a conversation there you yeah. know, that's, that you don't get. And you end up with so many uneducated people casting their vote. Mm-hmm. And you, you would have a lot less of that in the caucus system. Yeah, and there's there used to be a lot more caucus systems, but they've slowly gotten rid of them. And this might this be, may the be the excuse. This yeah, may to be get the rid end, of it because there's a lot oil. of talk of that now. I think Nevada that, is the only other state that does a caucus. Is it really? I think so. Huh. Um. So anyway, I I actually like the caucus system. I understand that it's kind of a cluster, j- just generally. But frankly, that's what I think people talking about politics should be. Yeah. Like when you're trying to decide on somebody to lead. Like it should be a discussion and it should be kind of a mess. Yeah. Well, because it, it because you're not getting any of that from your media anyway. No, and that's, no. that's, that would be my other argument. It's not like that the media is doing their job out here with this. So at least with the caucus system, you have people openly having these discussions, mm-hmm. you know? So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I agree with you. I didn't agree with you till you made the argument last night, but you converted <laughs> me. <laughs> Well, I mean, you can probably sound the trumpets for it, though. I mean, I, I think yeah, that this disaster in Iowa might signal the end because well, they've been pushing against it like a lot. But, but it's so much easier to control a vote. Yeah. Um, and to manipulate a vote. Yeah. Uh, like the caucus is harder to manipulate because you're out there in front of everybody. People can see it's funny like, visually you, who's voting. It's funny that you mentioned that because it turned out to be like just a, a not real thing, but it could have very easily been where like a bunch of the Bernie supporters were like all getting together and had like videoed their precincts mm-hmm. and was um they whenever it came out that Buddha Judge looked like he was going to win, they like started collecting these videos to mm-hmm. kind of do some of the math of like how did this really come out? Did it really come out the way yeah. it's being said it did? Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, and you it's you can have a more open system with the caucus that way because if everybody kind of keeps up with how their precinct voted, you kind of know where on a secret ballot who the hell knows, right? You know, yeah, exactly. Much easier to manipulate results in that case. So. So on that uh, refreshing note, yeah. <laughs> we may as well call it. Cool. We're calling it. Calling it. I win. <laughs> is, that, is that right? Yep, I win. Well, congratulations, right. Michael. You won. Thank you. It was pretty much uncontested. Uh, <laughs> so uh, as usual, uh, follow us on Facebook. Um, subscribe on iTunes and Podbean. Uh, like and share. Um, let's see. Let us let us know if you enjoyed this type of podcast because this is definitely different from something we normally do. Yeah, Um, I'd be interested in some feedback on it. Yeah, I I, I I don't want to do a whole lot of this. It was kind of fun though. I know every every once in a while, I'm good. I'm good with this. Yeah, Um, and and you'll definitely see hear more of this as we get closer to elections because there won't be a choice. Like it's going to be an important thing to talk about. I mean, I I swim around. It will become current events. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, and we want to do current events, and I'm yeah, I, like I keep up with this stuff so religiously. Yeah. So. 
Um, well, uh, we may as well call it there because I'm going to have to edit, like stitch together the two bits. <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, join us again in a week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try and stay free. Train how you fight. Ciao. Later. Mm-hmm.